What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I wanna start this video by thanking each of you for joining me today. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you consider doing so. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click those notifications to on. Welcome back to part two of my series on the all new TCL 8 series QLED television. If you missed part one and you want to know all the detailed specifications, I definitely recommend checking that out. I'll leave that above in the cards. But today we are going to move on to part two and I'm going to give you my honest review and my personal settings for all different kinds of content so that you can maximize your experience with this television and also make a decision whether or not you should purchase it. Now we're going to cover a lot of content. I'm gonna go as quickly as possible to get this done. So let's get started. Okay. We're gonna go into settings. First thing that I would like you to do, go ahead and hit the menu button or the home button on your remote. This will take you to this menu. First thing we're gonna do is go to power settings. I recommend shutting off auto power savings, the reduced power after 15 minutes. This will dim the picture and it will adjust your, you know, the way it looks without you wanting it to basically. So shut that off, uncheck it. Standby LED can also be turned on and off right here. And then fast TV startup. If you wanna be able to turn on your television with voice control, go ahead and enable that. It's a good feature to use. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn on the control for CEC. As you can see here, you can go ahead and mark the boxes that are compatible. Go ahead and do that. Also, make sure that your television and all of its apps are updated. Under this area here, you would simply hit software update, check, and it will do all the updates needed. Okay, now we have TV picture settings. Now, this is gonna depend highly, you know, if the room is bright or a very dark room and your overall preference. I really like bright and vivid. I leave this on the brightest, which is brighter. But as you can see here, you can adjust it to your liking. I pick brighter. Also, I like to know when I'm actually getting Dolby Vision. Um, so go ahead and turn that on. I can also say that when you're just getting the standard HDR, it will also let you know that you're getting HDR at the top right. Next, we will move on to actually the device settings. As you can see now, it says TV inputs. Now, when you're on this, you wanna go ahead and make sure that they are named the correct things. But what I would like you to do is go over scroll down to HDMI mode and change it to HDMI 2.0. Now, if you have an older device or you're just not sure, auto is something that should automatically switch it. However, I will say there has been several times I tried it on auto, I had my Xbox X going and it was not giving me all my compatibilities. I know that because I checked on what my TV was capable of and until I went and manually switched it to HDMI 2.0, it did not unlock all those features. Okay, so for surround sound, there's a couple things that I recommend doing. One, shutting the television speakers off. Of course, only do this if you have a sound bar or you're using a surround sound of any kind. Um, go ahead and switch this to off. Then you're gonna go into one, go ahead and turn on Dolby Atmos notifications so that you know that you're getting Dolby Atmos when you're expecting to. And next, in this menu here, you see that there's a lot of different settings. Now, if you are absolutely sure of the format that is being pushed through from your Blu-ray player or your television, go ahead and pick it. Otherwise, go ahead and leave it on Auto Detect. Time to go over my visual settings. Couple things to keep in mind. One, I am extremely limited on the content I can show you without getting my video pulled. That kind of makes it hard to show you what this can do, but I will do my best. I might have to use some screenshots because there is a ton of different settings for different kinds of content. Now, also you will need to download the TCL Roku TV app. 
most or not most some of the most critical settings like gamma noise reduction and of course color space are on the app so go ahead and have that done we are going to start with game mode now this is an hdr game being ran through the xbox x first thing you want to pick is the picture size i recommend direct for all sources next you want to pick the brightness standard i like the brightest so i pick brighter next we go to picture mode this will be the same for dolby vision or hdr you will have normal bright dark and then you can adjust each one so this is my game settings that i use i have it on normal i go to picture settings here local contrast to high backlight 100 brightness 46 contrast 100 sharpness 38 color 61 the color temperature is normal i kind of toggle this between normal and cool these again are just what i like all of the action clarity led motion clarity should be shut off and just game mode should be turned on now here is a peek this is the bright hdr and i will show you my dark you can see that there sorry let me get that in there for you and that is my dark now notice with the dark i have the color temperature on warm okay lastly we have the app portion i have it vivid the gamma 2.4 noise reduction off color temperature normal and when you scroll down here you will see the color space i have that on native and for those of you xbox x fans i wanted to show you what i was talking about if you do not put it to the latest HDMI standard, you will not get all these green check marks as far as what your television can accept from your Xbox. Moving on to YouTube, I'll use my video. Okay, so this is my YouTube video. This is a, just a standard 4K 60 frames per second video. So this would be your settings that you would use mainly on any just standard 4k content so we have picture mode normal now if you like vivid colors meaning if you want to watch hotel transylvania switch this to vivid honestly when i go to vivid i like it more some people don't like that much color so what we have as you can see backlight 88 um, sorry, let me backtrack. Local contrast on high. You're going to want to actually use this on high. For some reason, dynamic contrast does nothing. I'll show you. It does nothing to the picture. I'm not sure why, but this makes a huge difference when it comes to black levels and especially having no light bleeding out of the bottom. So black, uh, sorry, backlight 88, brightness 48 contrast 100 sharpness 19 color 59 and you can see the rest two things i want to make you really aware of i never used to use action soothing or smoothing sorry action smoothing or action clarity or auto motion is what it's normally called in most tvs in this television for whatever reason you have to now the funny thing is is that they do not give you the soap opera effect but if you don't use them you actually see quite a bit of stuttering especially in moving sequences but with them on high it looks perfect and then just so you can see if you want to do it on vivid i switched it to vivid the settings i left the same the vivid just brings out a little more color then jumping back to the app, we got Vivid 2.2, Gamma, noise reduction is off, color temp is normal, and then down here we kept that color space to native. Let's talk about settings with Dolby Vision. Unfortunately, again, I can't show you content, but what I did is I started it so that I can adjust the settings. Now this, just a little shout out, this is Gemini Man with Will Smith. I'm a huge fan of his. 
but this movie probably will make any TV look amazing. So as you can see now, we have our settings and you can see the little Dolby Vision symbol next to picture mode. Again, we have dark, normal, and bright. Now, again, I'm gonna go with bright first, and then we're gonna to go to our picture settings. Local contrast, again, is going to be on high. Now, brightness is going to be a little different here. I recommend jumping it up to 52. Contrast will stay at 100 and sharpness will drop down to 27. And again, color, we're going to actually drop two points to 59. Once that is complete, you can decide whether or not you want the normal, warm, or cool. In this scenario, I actually prefer the warm. Action clarity, action smoothing remain on high. In addition to that, actually, in this movie, because this movie was filmed at such a high frame rate, you can even turn on the LED motion clarity. Just a little bit of information for some reason on this television, if you only turn on LED motion clarity and action clarity and smoothing is off, the picture actually flickers. Back to the phone, we have the gamma on 2.4, color temperature is warm, and then native as far as the color space. Now I want to say right here, sometimes when you use noise reduction in Dolby Vision movies, you actually will get some lines in the screen and the dirty screen effect really is, I don't know why, it just really comes out. So try not to use that when you're watching very high quality content like Dolby Vision. Another note, if the picture is too dark for you, by adjusting the gamma up 2.2, 2.0, the picture will become much brighter, but you might have to rework your settings. And if you're interested, here is my dark. And then my normal. Normal, I actually have sharpness down to zero. That is a major change. Just keep that in mind. Everything else is right there for you. Just wanted to show you this. The television does a pretty good job of not blooming around the voodoo symbol as it bounces around. Typically, you would see a big bloom of whiteness around it or light. And it really just does a spectacular job. So I have Dish Network as my television provider. So these settings here, I'm sorry nothing's playing. I couldn't find anything without content and where I could pause it. So I'm just gonna show you the settings. Now, these settings actually will work for watching sports and everyday television. And to be honest with you, this TV, probably one of the best TVs for everyday viewing that I've ever seen. So local contrast in this case, actually, I recommend that you turn it to off. Dynamic contrast, turn it to high. Now, you're not going to see a big change as far as it doing anything immediately, like I said before, but I've noticed a difference as far as this setting goes. Backlight, you want to drop it down to 85. OK, the brightness, you want to drop this down to 44. Keep contrast at 100. Now, sharpness is tricky. I've noticed the higher quality, like the 1080p content, um, you can drop this down to 22. And then, you know, older content, um, like reruns of Friends, I've noticed that you actually have to up the ante on the sharpness a little bit. So anywhere from 22 to 35. Color, I stick with that 61 normal. Um, color temperature, action um, smoothing and clarity on high. Now, one thing different you want to do in the app, you want that color space now on auto. Temperature is up to you, of course. Noise reduction on high. Now, this gives you no negative side effects when it comes to cable television that I have noticed and I'm pretty picky. And then the gamma, remember I said the gamma will really make the screen brighter. 
Now, everyone's preference is different. Sorry about this blurriness. But if you want it to be really, really bright, go with 1.8. And if you want the truest detail, go to 2.2. When it has come to television, going 2.4 is way too dark unless maybe you rent, you know, a paid per view movie. All right, so we're doing a little bit off angle viewing so you can get an idea. Sorry about the bouncing, but here I am. I'm pretty much all the way to the side and we'll keep swinging back. Again, the camera is not going to show you exactly what I'm seeing here as it has to focus. But honestly, it does a very good job of pretty much keeping most of the color. Just thought this would be interesting to a lot of you that wonder. You know, not all of us can sit directly in front of our television. But I honestly have to say that this is a phenomenal television. Great job, TCL, for sure. Just wanted to quickly show you this shot. Usually when you have, you know, backlit televisions, when you see these little white dots or stars, you see it starting to almost crush the white or you don't see all these particles. And this television does such a great job. Pay attention to this corner here. You could see everything. And of course, my camera can't even pick it up that well, but it is so vivid that every little speckle shows. And it's probably the close I've seen to OLED. And definitely a great job for an LED TV. All right, time for the review. First, let me start by re-emphasizing in the past, I honestly was not the biggest fan of TCL. I am extremely picky. I have certain things that really bother me when I'm watching television. And honestly, I'm kind of trained for that high end TV. So when TCL decided to announce that they were going to come out with something that's going to directly compete with the higher end Samsung QLED TV, which is, you know, my favorite television so far, I wasn't sure what to expect. I talked to them at CES and I finally got my hands on these TVs. Now, I want to let you know, I like to be honest. So I have a 65 inch and a 75 inch. The 65 inch did have issues. It had almost pink bars going up and down of light anytime you turned on the auto motion. Thank God it was under the return policy with um, Best Buy. They took care of me, no problem, and exchanged the TV. Now, out of the two televisions, the 65 and 75 inch, the 75 inch is what is behind me. This is the one that is packed with technology. And not that the 65 isn't, but what I'm saying by that is, is they give us the specs for the 75 inch the thousand dimming zones, right? The 25,000 mini LEDs are in the 75 inch. And you know what? I do notice a difference in the overall performance of the television. I love the 65 inch also, don't get me wrong. I just wanted to make that clear. Also, this eight series TV cannot compare to any other TCL TVs out, including the cheaper QLED TVs. Those, you know, are probably great TVs also. But again, this is the highest caliber television that TCL has ever made. And so far it has performed awesome. So let's talk about that. First, features. I have never used Roku in the past. Roku is a great operating system. I'm actually really impressed with that. It's obviously built into TCL's televisions. It's been for a while and it utilizes that operating system. It has been fast, smooth and fun. They have great things that really make me happy, um, like this fish tank here. I love the fact that you can pick themes and screen savers. You know, all of your apps are together. That portion of this television, I would give a 10 out of 10. I really, really love the features of 
the 8 series. The next, the remote. Now the remote honestly looks chintzy, it's small, but I love it. It's easy to use, it's fun to use, I love everything about it, the Netflix button, ESPN, Hulu, Roku button built in. The only thing I don't like about it is you cannot control your cable box with it. I would have given the remote a 10 had they done that, but without it, it is a cheaper plastic build, but that's probably better as far as longevity goes, but I will give the remote an eight. Picture quality. Now, obviously this varies from HDR, to Dolby Vision and to standard definition viewing. Let me say so far for cable viewing, this is probably one of the best televisions I've ever seen. Sports are crisp, they don't blur. You know, I, I know you know what I'm talking about. If you watch the NBA, sometimes it looks really just drained out and blurry. This doesn't do that. Obviously, I've had to watch a lot of replay of the NBA because everything's not going right now, but it looks great. Normal television actually looks, in some cases, like some of the lower end 4K TVs look. So I'm extremely impressed with that. Um, HDR view, um, viewing is phenomenal. I love the fact, one, that it holds its brightness. You got a great peak brightness with bright and vivid colors. And a lot of HDR televisions, as soon as HDR kicks on, it's so dim, you just can't watch it sometimes, at least that's my opinion. But not this one. This one performs well, and as far as it's HDR, I'm gonna give it a 10. Yep, a 10. Dolby Vision, again, amazing, spectacular even. I mean, when Dolby Vision hits 4K, I, you know what, the best way I can describe it and my wife would always say, you know, you show me the demo video, but nothing ever looks like the demo. I can tell you, if you watch a 4K Dolby Vision um, movie on this television, the entire movie will look like the demo version, like the demo mode where you see these perfect trains going by. It is that great. Um, 10 out of 10 with the Dolby Vision. So next, the sound of the television. Again, crisp highs, clear mids, it has great lows and a little bass. I honestly can see a lot of people not even needing a sound bar unless you're one of those people that, you know, like me, that want really loud surround sound. But for a television to sound that great, I would actually give the sound, I'm gonna go with a nine out of 10. And that's just because there was a few glitches here and there, but overall, just great. Now, when you put that all together into one package, you want to think, well, they must chintz out on build quality, right? Well, actually my gripe about this television is so heavy. I mean, you better have a real wall mount and it better be in a stud because this TV will fall off the wall, weighing in well over a hundred pounds. This thing is heavy, but it is built out of quality material. You would have to feel it to know what I'm talking about. Besides it just being beautiful, it is just absolutely sturdy. Um, and you can just tell that they went all out on build quality. And the stand is heavy and bold and just well put together. Build quality, I'm going to give this television a 10 out of 10. That along with a great picture, I have to tell you, TCL 8 Series 75 inch has absolutely stunned me. And when I say stunned, I mean I was stunned. The first time I programmed all my settings and I put on Adobe Vision 4K movie, my jaw was on the floor. It was one of the best TVs I've ever seen in a home. That's a big statement. I've also been to CES and I've seen really high-end TVs. And I tell you, those TVs are better, but you're starting to really see it climb. And what really excites me is this is TCL's first run at the high-end market, but they are here to play and they have showed me and I think the world that they could make some quality TVs that will make your jaw drop and I absolutely 
would recommend the TCL 8 Series in either 65 or 75 inch. I do want to make a note, the 75 inch again does is the one with the thousand dimming zones and all the lights. If you missed part one, I cover all the features and the specs in detail. That's what that video was for. That's why I'm not going to go into it in this one. But this is a great TV, but the 75 inch is likely the one that will, if they do um, turn on the um, eARC and the new HDMI standard, from what I heard, it's only going to be in the 75 inch, but neither of them have it yet. So we'll have to see, but that's it. This is the TV you want to get. And if it's on sale, oh my gosh, I saw Best Buy put these on sale. Thousand dollars, 3000. Okay. So 2000 for the 65, 3000 for the 75 is what I paid, right? So I saw a thousand for the 65 and the 75 inch went to like 1799 at that price. Oh my gosh. At that price, best TV on the market, hands down. At you $17.99 for one of the best TVs I've seen in 4K, it's a no-brainer. Go out and get one. The TCL 8 series is a television that has far exceeded my expectations. It is beautiful, well-built, and a television that you might want to check out. It has absolutely changed my mind about TCL and I definitely can't wait to see what other high-end TVs they have for us in the future. As always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you, life is so short. Don't forget to love your family, love your neighbors. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. You know, the smallest act of kindness can change someone's day and more than you know. I wanna say thank you so much for watching and considering subscribing. Remember, I do YouTube for you and you only. If you need me, I'm here. You can reach me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic, or of course, reach me anytime in the comments section. I can't wait to see you in the next video and talk to you in the comments section. Until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic, and I'm out. Peace.